everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Thinking Spatial in Stereo. Today, I have with me Tony Joy from Sound Particles. I'm Catarina from Sound Particles, broadcasting from Portugal. I also have João Franco. He will be our sound engineer in the questions and answers. Hello. And finally, we have the most talented musician I know, Nakul. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as you might notice, we had a small problem with our emails. So you already know that we have a gift for you. <laughs> it's okay. You, I noticed that you all already start purchasing. It's perfect. That's the idea, obviously. At the end of the webinar, I will announce the uh, the one who, who won our giveaway, sorry, our giveaway of a, a Skydust stereo. So I'm not taking much time. Tony Choi, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katrina. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Joy from Sound Particles, uh, coming here live from Los Angeles, California. It's very sunny and beautiful out there. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know we have people from all around the world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, no matter if it's morning, afternoon, or uh, evening for you. Uh, Again, without further ado, let me introduce Nakul Abhyangar, a quick introduction about Nakul. So he, this is a multi-talented uh, artist. He has sung a little over 200 songs, done over 40 stadium shows worldwide, uh, has worked as a composer on multiple movies. He has worked on two movies uh, or more, and he's been learning music for decades, right? So he's a singer. Uh, he's a musician at heart. Right. And one the, one of the reasons why I wanted Nakul on this webinar is we always speak about sound particle plugins or any other plugins, usually in regards to mixing or mastering or production. We rarely speak about how music is created. When you have an idea in your head, how do you bring it out into DAW? How do you make it a song? Do you need to spend $50,000 and get all the gear to achieve that? Or can you achieve it using, let's say, just logic, which Nagul will be using as his DAW of choice today? So what we are going to discuss today is, one, how does a musician like Nagul use sound particles, plugins, right? The suit of plugins to bring music from his head, to bring them to life uh, in a DAW, and how he writes that music in stereo, right? Using headphones or speakers, but also be future proof if he needs to publish that in Atmos. So with that, Nagul, I will let you take over, share your screen and walk us through the session that you've prepared for us. Sure. Um, first of all, hello everyone for joining this webinar and thank you so much uh, Sound Particles for uh, having me as your guest today to do this webinar. And having said that, I've tried to come up with a demo of sorts uh i'm in love with sound particles plugins i must tell and this is a small demo that i've come up with um i'll just play once from top to bottom and later on we can go section by section and i can explain what i've done so um let's uh hit play That's my bad. Oh, you could hear it? Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yes. That's okay. Sorry. Hey, before, 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 he, the top again. Yeah, before he play. So the first phrase he's going to play is the vocal track he recorded without anything. Oh, yes. that's, a, that's a dry file. And then yeah. the plugin turns on and you'll hear the same vocal file created into harmonies using density. So yeah, let's hear yes. it. So I'm just going to color that. This is my source. This is what I recorded without any plugins and nothing. And this goes through density. And when it hits here, you will see the color change. Uh... Thank you. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Uh, well done. Thank you. So all that started with that one phrase of vocals. Yes. Is that right? Can you walk yeah. us through your creative process, if you don't mind? Sure. So um, my focus in this entire demo was using sound particles uh, plugins to explore the harmonic ability. That's one. And mm -hmm. second was um, if we get into the mixing side, then how do we create more space for instruments to breathe in? Um, right. So as so a composer, these... even when you compose, you're trying to keep the mixing phase in your mind, even if you might mix it, if it might be somebody else, but you're trying to create music with space in mind. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Because uh, part of the music writing process is also how to uh, place the elements in the mix because right. each phrase can be interpreted in multiple ways. So when when I hand over my project to my mixing engineer, my intent has to be reflected uh, without me telling anything. You know, it should, as soon as he listens to the demo, as soon as he or she or listens to the demo, um, the intent should be right there. Understood. So just to clarify to everyone who's uh, attending, uh, Knuckle works on some of the major Bollywood movies that has come out, that's about to come out. And the way that Bollywood movies work, you usually have songs that just like Nagul just played, you'll have a melodic piece that is usually uh, published on streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, all that. Then you also deliver this to a mixing dub stage where they might make this in Atmos. That's why even though Nagul is writing in stereo, he's keeping spatial in mind. And with by using all our plugins uh, from sound particle density, for example. So maybe we should start with that one, the vocal one you yes. were showing. Can you yes. walk us through that, please? Sure. So um, so this was a sample I recorded. So that was uh, my vocal sample. And right. then what I did was I threw density plugin uh -huh. and I just, let's say I was bored of recording, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to record one line and see what uh, this plugin could do. Right. So I kind of, so density lets me generate multiple voices. So what I did was I generated one, two, three, four, five, six voices. Right. And um, I think I've, uh, yeah, six voices, correct. So uh, pitch, number of voices, gain, all the math, all right. that is right. the sauce in the plugin. But I mean, what, what fascinates I, me is the pitch thing, you know, what you've yeah. done, the harmonies. <clears throat> so essentially what I did was um, I just sang the bass notes of a chord, of a chord progression. In this case, I just sang in musical terms one flat three flat seven and four so if you listen to if that's my uh, do so i just did a do do, do, do. <clears throat> so that nice. was my uh one flat three flat seven and four and then what i did was i assigned relative pitches i just formed chords using this voicing so one is minus 12 which is like a straight octave down Minus five relative to what note I'm singing is a fifth below. So if I'm doing right. a, da, then the minus five is da, and minus eight would be a major third interval. So if I'm doing a da, then minus eight would sound da, and then minus one is minus one semitone. So da, da. So I'm essentially right. uh, forming like a major seventh, uh, sorry, major um, ninth chord. So major ninth chords here. So this is this adds the major seventh and minus ten. Uh, right. So adds let's a ninth chord to it. So what I did was, uh -huh. <clears throat> if I can just turn this input up and I can run through individuals, you know. So that's exactly what I sang, but one octave down. That's minus five. Mm 
nice and so on you know so when i play everything together oh it sounds like that if i can just dial mm-hmm. this down. that's my input signal so that's what happened <laughs> let me ask and you i was this. like whoa <laughs> Right before you go, got introduced to density, how would you achieve this? What would it take if you ha- didn't have density? How would you achieve the same result before? <clears throat> oh God! If just I just walk us through. You don't have to do it. You just I'm just curious. How yeah, many tracks I mean, would you need? One, two. Three. I would have either sung this. Wait, <laughs> it's tricky because it's one, two, three, four, five harmonies. So six harmonies, and each harmony has multiple voices in it. Exactly. Ten voices for minus uh, minus twelve, and then ten. So one, two, three, four, forty nine, and fifty six voices. Right. Which are microtonally apart within that particular pitch zone, the D tune. Right. So you can see that I have added a voice of minus twelve with ten voicings in it. So these ten voices are not exactly the same. They are detuned by uh, this knob. which exactly. is says 21 cents so it still sounds you know very different from each replica that it's creating so each replica is unique and hence it gives that thickness uh, in the sound and to create this well 60 tracks <laughs> well maybe not 60 but that's why i want to point mm-hmm. that out to, you know one thing we do at sound particles again for people who are attending the webinar we are the masters of couple things right one is specialization we master specialization and when yes. i say specialization we go format agnostic so even in this plugin or our standalone sound particles you can choose any format if if nagul clicks on the output format tab on the plugin nagul can you click on that please just to sure. show that list is almost exhaustive any format you can think about we support it right so one even if you even if nagul or someone created six minimum of six tracks then add chorus plugin on each that takes time it's not about creating more tracks yeah. when you have a melodic idea in your brain you want to flush it out immediately just like nagul did one recording a couple adjustments on the knobs or if nagul likes this settings he can say this as a preset and make his make this his bread and butter yeah but yeah and yeah i can just I can just hit save, and just hit There save. There you go. Um, I can just save this as let's say major ninth, and, and then I that, have it. There you go. Right. Major and ninth. another thing is the detune knob. Like Nagul was saying, even if you create mm-hmm. one track for each of those modules, keep in mind each of these modules in density is creating whatever number of voices you assigned it. So we randomize things. That's another thing that we are really good at. remember the standalone sound particles application can create millions of particles density doesn't create millions of particles but it does the same principle very well and you just heard that so what else do you want to uh, jump into nagul so we heard this track which other track yes. are you going to show us next so um the next interesting stuff would be one of these synth a uh, sky dust is a synth by sound particles again with some really cool presets and this was one of the presets i really liked so i just doubled my baseline with can you unsolo it now so you can hear it in context as well yes. that's how it sounds and it's not like a very static uh baseline um, yeah it has its own um you know movements and it just sounded great so i just kept it that way see <laughs> i think it's coming from here uh uh-huh. if i'm right yeah so that's Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you right there just for one quick second. I know I'm talking a lot already. Sorry about that, people. Uh, but uh, the one thing I want to point out is, you know, Sky Dust is called a 3D synthesizer, and I've seen so many customers tell me, "Oh, I only work in stereo." And one thing I try to point out to people all the time is that 
there's space between two speakers too, left and right. So Nagul, can you go to the main uh, tab, please? Uh, and when hit, Nagul hits play on the synth, on the main tab, so you can see the oh, yeah. panning. Uh, this one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you hit play, yeah, it's moving from left to right. <laughs> yeah. And that's also spatial movement. You don't have to have dual speakers all around you, right? So Skydust works great in stereo as well. That's just one thing yes. I want to point out. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, the, uh, and oh shit, <laughs> sorry, Zoom is playing it on. It's all good. Okay. Um, uh, let me just put this here then. Uh, wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then the next track. Um, uh -huh. I did something interesting with the rhythm as well. I I just wanted to throw density on everything. So <laughs> let's hear it. I tried doing so. This was my rhythm groove. And then I threw density on it. And can you see the plugin, please? It, it suddenly made the rhythm grew very interesting and dynamic of sorts because of all the moving particles and the creating um a kind of a very spatial it it's it's creating room for the rhythm groove to breathe is what I can best interpret. <laughs> and without it, it's yeah, too it's on like, the face for me. You know? It is. It's, it's like too sterile. That's a word I used tend to use a lot yeah. these days. <laughs> yeah. It's like sterile. And this one added such a nice space and I was just like in love with it instantly. So and that was that. I mean, I just loved using this plugin on top. Otherwise, the rhythm was like sticking out too much for me. You know, as soon as I tried putting this plugin, the rhythm just went back nice and sat in the mix, right. which is what I like because it's it's not a very engaging track, but it's a very chill vibe track, and. I didn't want the, I didn't want any element to, you know, say, Hey, this track is run because of me. I just right. wanted everything to like relax and lay back. <laughs> so that's what happened with uh, density for me on the rhythm. That's good and to hear. then um, I used another preset for chords section uh -huh. and it's called plucky pad. Nice. So I could have turned this into up, but I just love the way it sounds as a pad. And if I wanted to, I could easily turn this into arpeggio. Still sounds great. I still love it. Wow. This is good. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> you know, I have so, to ask you, as a musician, how do you find Skydust? Would you say it's intuitive? Does it help? Does it inspire you to be creative? It does. It does. A hundred percent. Because um, like I'm I'm a kind of producer who wouldn't want to layer a lot of tracks, add a lot of tones. Right. I would rather aim at you know, getting what I want in as less a number of tracks as possible. And I think that's what Skydust is enabling me to achieve unfortunately i don't have a uh, a surround setup yet in my room like a 7.1.2 or something right but let's say i had it and imagine while scoring itself if i can just route this into any of the formats i need right. and skydust has some really strong fx section and like it's just too deep you know uh, i think i'll this webinar can go on for like two days just on <laughs> skydust <laughs> it's really deep Right. Uh, uh, can I point out two things to you, uh, to you and other musicians mm -hmm. who are in attendance? 
So Nagul, I know you are new to SkyDust yourself. Uh, yeah. So if you go to the spatial tab, you saw the arpeggiator, right? Yes. Uh, sorry, on the app tab, my bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a thing called a tab called sequencer right below the arpeggiator. Yes. yes. So one, you can add, uh, if you click on the add parameter, you can actually add keys. So if you want to, you know, uh -huh. make your own chord progressions and stuff. So pitch bar right. at the very top. You can make it a pitch bar or you can make it, uh, I think mm. it's probably on the top. Yeah. Oh, okay. right. oh, no, it was there, I think. Yeah. This was the pitch part, yeah. Right. And you can add steps. Now it's zero steps. And you can add poly, uh, poly chords or mono chords easily. But right. where it really, really shines is that if you go to the add parameter again, you mm -hmm. can actually arpeggiate spatial panning, pan control at the very top. Oh, wow. Oh. So you can okay. say your oh. music is moving in oh. time, in sync. And not just spatial parameter. You can also arpeggiate or sequence pretty much any parameter in the synth, including wow. filter resonance, right? I mean, something for you to explore later, but I just want to yeah. point that out. We made this synth for musicians, right? The concept is we take care of the technology and you take care of the music. That's it. Exactly. So this is what I was talking about, you know, having a surround setup right while writing music and with, with this immense power, all I need is to just sit on it half an hour, tweak what I need, and one synth, one preset, enough to fill the entire cinema theater. <laughs> Good so, news for you. Guess what? Yeah. You can use your own current headphones. Keep uh -huh. writing this. So let's imagine you're writing this uh, piece of cue for a movie, for Atmos. Right. right, right. You can keep writing in stereo at home with headphones. Mm -hmm. Then take this very session, go to a 712 room, and just switch it. Oh, yeah. You're, That's right. You're already That's in right. spatial. Yes, so yes, you have yes. no excuse mm. not to write in spatial or in stereo, right. but let's All not go do down here, there. right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So again, you don't have to worry about that yourself. Your mix tech or your mix engineer can walk you through the technical aspects <laughs> of spatial when you have to right. go into that. But let's right. not get right. sidetracked there. So, what's the next track you're going to show us in the session? Okay. So the next one again, uh, I used another uh, harpsichord patch from Skydust. Okay. But I did a little tweak on this one um i think this patch uh didn't have arpeggiator on it so it was that. so it was this patch uh -huh. and i just wanted to make this as an arpeggio because i love the shiny sound that right. it has and i think i Nice. I just love this tone. And then, then you know, if I have like an ARP going like this and it's pretty much um, filling up the entire space, I just wanted its brightness to duck down a little bit. So instead uh -huh. of EQing or going inside the synth, um, I just tried using air music. Right. And all of a sudden it just went inside the mix and sat well and then i don't know why i use space ah, okay with space controller what i did was oh, okay let me so without that okay i don't know what what kind of the panning trick this plugin does but let's say this is here right and uh -huh. i listen to the sound let me just put this on loop just if you if you all are on headphones or if you have headphones are, are better to uh, understand what I'm trying to explain here but this is what I really really felt cool about this plugin so you know, using the logic panel, uh -huh. I always felt like you only hear so much space in the stereo. But as soon as I threw in the space controller, I don't know what it does, but uh, I could sense so much more space in my headphones. You know, it made space for other elements to breathe in. It's The app became sort of wider and... Um, I don't know what voodoo is written into <laughs> this. Some magic, man. Yeah, but um, 
I gained so much space, and then with the air music, it just sat so well in the mix. And I'll let me turn this off. I can hear the pad really well. I can hear the arpeggio around it, like sort of an. Uh, it has a very enveloping effect. You know, it's like nice. um, that's the hugging element here, and then vocals around it. So it I, gave like. I see what you mean. because the harpsichord is very sharp and i think by yeah. using the air for music so those of you who are not familiar with air for music uh, nagul can you pull that plug in up if you don't oh, mind yeah, sure. please sure, sure, uh, sure, sure air for music is a very subtle plug in it simulates air and i know to some people it sounds what why air let's think <laughs> about it if we had two people in the same room and if one person is singing and the other person is hearing it without any microphones what's in between that person's mouth and the other person's ear air right this plugin simulates that because these days we all record everything close mic and then we deliver it into headphones things sound sterile because there's no air by adding that 197 feet that nagul has added to the harpsichord the plugin is placing the harpsichord it's taking it away from your face placing it about 200 feet away so that the vocals can remain on your face right so it's very subtle it's not a day and night difference plugin especially if you solo it and hit bypass you won't hear a big difference but play it in context always play things in a musical context play your whole session or just like in this example he's playing harpsichord on uh, the pads and the vocals and then you'll realize the difference is subtle but it pushes it back enough for vocals to take the precedence can you hear that again please nagul sure Here that half second without it. There you go. I can That's awesome, man. Yeah, I can push the gain and still, you know, it's not like and believe me uh people might think that oh it's just a high pass you know a low pass filter here that's happening believe me i doing similar curves using multiple uses and it gave me the effect of what this plugin gives the sound still feels very natural and like tony said you know it feels like the sound is like 200 away 200 feet away from you and not uh like um you know how it sounds when you throw a low pass filter on anything right it sounds it artificial sound, yeah <laughs> it sounds artificial and this one literally sounds as if instrument has been taken away from you and still the character is maintained uh, pretty intact so which yeah. is what i really liked about this plugin thanks nan and Before hence you can see on. yeah hence you can see that plugin in almost every track <laughs> good to hear here's a good news for everyone who is attending and who doesn't know this this specific plugin air for music is actually free So go to soundparticles.com and download it. Uh, it's a gift wow. uh, from us for you to make more natural sounding music. We just feel uh, music needs a bit more of air in it. So next yes. track, what what are you going to show us next? Okay, so uh, just before we go to the next track, I did something with the vocals here. Right, I I just didn't want my voice to come in straight here. So this okay. is the creative writing, right? But this is where. sound particles comes in um handy as a creative tool so if i just solo the voice um uh-huh. and play see what happens that's wicked so, yeah so uh you know this is 
this is something no one does this throw a bus throw in a reverb here and then put the bus in a pre-fader mode and you can you know, in this way you can use reverb independently and completely get rid of the dry voice which is exactly what i did and without the brightness plugin and the density plugin on the reverb it sounded like this and then i was like okay i need i need more juice on that reverb you know let me get this enough. right let me get this right you're putting density and brightness spanner after a reverb on the reverb track yeah so essentially yeah. i just wanted to juice up the <laughs> reverb a little more i was like this is not enough you know i i tried uh i tried to strike a good balance between the dry voice and the reverb and it was just not working it wasn't giving me that mood can we and, hear just density can you show the plugin yeah. to us as well please this is Let's density uh this is the density on the reverb okay without density and with it just sounds much thicker wider and it has a little bit of that chorusy kind of an effect which it i does, really love but without adding the artificial faciness at least to my yeah. ears yeah yeah and it it just becomes wider and i just love that because without that for me it reverb is more like that for me right now and with density it's like super wide yeah and i was like wow this sounds great then let's try doing something more and i tried adding the brightness plugin of course you did <laughs> <laughs> and i was like let me spin this reverb around and completely get rid of my dry vocals right and this is what happened <laughs> So essentially I'm automating this knob. Yeah, that's uh, a good hack. <laughs> yeah. And just while uh listening to the track I just went like whoop and whatever was sounding good I just, you know. that is wow so all this you are doing yeah. while you're writing this piece of music this is not even mixing this is part of your creative yeah. process and, and this sound. took 10 minutes this took 10 minutes for me that's it wow that's and i was like wow and if you see my this entire session literally is 15 18 tracks including right. my reverb tracks so super tiny session but it just sounds so big and then i went into uh arpeggiating mode <laughs> okay and i just wanted to see um so the brightness panel essentially if you have uh, seen or read about it uh, depending on the frequency spectrum or the pitch of your input signal it uh, allows you to pan stuff around and i used a preset called invade and i threw a logic arpeggiator on it So here brightness is on bypass right now. Okay. And this along with my strings was sounding like this and even on strings I think um okay let me just turn off the density for now. So this was my raw tone of strings with this up.
so i had i had a, a straight problem with the strings here uh, as you can see the chord transition from one chord to another there's a small break and that right. doesn't sound like a live take right you see it's a little here and there and this was totally this was an accident Okay, let's hear the accident. I was I was in the density mood, <laughs> and <laughs> what happened was a complete accident. And I was like, "Wow, I should tell Tony about this." <laughs> and this is what happened. and i was like wait did i accidentally throw any reverb plug in on this or was it the right. density and i was like what was happening because all of a sudden the strings became extremely smooth all the chord transitions became smooth and i just felt so nice listening to it it it's not a delay it's not a reverb but i was like yeah. what is it It's, <laughs> it's almost like a reverb or a delay but without yeah. the mud there's no mud yeah there's no mud and there's exactly. no tail right and i think the reason why this happy accident happened is because of the grain type if you look at the grain type in yes. density density can do regular uh, linear forward or reverse or both in this use case accidentally he put it in reverse, reverse. and i think that's actually adding that reverb like effect but yes. without again adding any mud to your production it just gelling everything without creating anything additional that's messy yeah. let's try it regular let's see how it sounds no reverse is the way to go man reverse reverse is the way to go wow so i was like literally blown away i was like wow That's good. So this is how an idea from your head comes to life, right? Yeah. Happy, happy accidents, powerful tools that lets you create music. Exactly. So this is a straight preset for me. Um, I might call <laughs> it the string glue. <laughs> yeah. Nice name, <laughs> strings glue. <laughs> There you go. Let's do that. Okay. And I can use this on any pad strings if there's some error that's happening. in any place where you know there's a small signal cut feel free to use this <laughs> preset and you're sorted there you go uh, so one problem was sorted and then when i played this with the arpeggiator suddenly i could feel so much um space you know arpeggiator right in the center and then strings were like wide but not harsh they were like in the mix right um sounding really good and then in the next section i just got a little more greedy and i did i i just filled around with the arpeggio a little bit What's happening there? Can you see the plugin, please? So here, I threw in brightness. Of course, you know here it was in bypass, and here it comes to life. And okay. I set the low and the. So I went to uh, from the brightness. I went. I chose pitch as my parameter. Okay. To decide what to pan, and mm -hmm. then I gave um, start as this dot. Right. And I gave a clockwise direction to it. and this was my b3 was my lowest note the lowest threshold and c sharp 8 was my higher threshold right and as i played you can see all the notes that are below b3 right they stay in the center or it's or, or in its original state that is here so right. because i've defined the tone to start at this point correct and as we cross b3 we go to c4 d4 whatever any note after that till c8 c sharp 8 they all travel all the notes travel this way right that's so you're basically happening. mandating that anything with a low frequency stays there but anything with higher frequency starts moving let's hear yes. it yes pretty 
cool. Yeah, so it suddenly created a lot of space for me right in the center because I wanted this to be highlighted in the center. I wanted that to have that center stage. Then I was like, okay, then what do I do with the strings? Um, Again, I went back to my favorite air music here and I just pushed it back a little bit. So I'm not losing the string calls here. They're right. very much present, but they're not disturbing the violin. The violin is taking the center stage. That's the brightest of all the tracks here. And strings is sort of becoming the, the outer boundary of this whole section. And Arpeggio is just playing around. Um, nice. if I Can just... you hear the whole, whole session in that section too? Oh, please. yeah. And without air, I'll show what was happening. Um, without the air plugin, air is on the strings, right? Air is on the strings. Yeah, okay. that's right. So let me just turn off the So if I just solo the strings and the violin. with the air the imaging gets so much better there's more room for the reverb of the violin to breathe in Right. And you can hear, okay, these are the string pads. This is the violin reverb. And the violin is dead center playing, shining in the center, I would say. Absolutely. I mean, this is yeah. why we have some of the best uh, programmers on staff here at Sound Particles uh, in Luria, in Portugal. A huge shout right. out to them. Uh, yes. We have <laughs> really, really skilled uh, guys with PhDs and masters and bachelors in programming what our amazing team does is create realistic physics based plugins right we right, don't do right. snake oil or black magic what we mm -hmm. do is rooted in mathematics and physics and i like to think you know we do a fantastic job at that so a huge huge shout out to all that team knuckle i want to yeah. show, uh, point out one quick thing about the brightness spanner that you used yes. to make the synth move mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know if you saved a preset for that yet uh but what no, I want I to yeah, just save it because it sounds cool, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, okay, let me just see. Right. So why Nakul is saving it, what I want to point out to everyone who's attending is there's a randomizer button uh, towards the bottom corner, right? So when you hit play on the session, if you're not sure what to do with uh, the specific arpeggiator, uh, actually you can play the whole mix, uh, Nakul. So okay. You can kind of hear it in context. Yeah, sure. uh, so when you hit play and if you hit the dice while it's playing, you can actually hear different options and stop when something sounds cool, right? So when you're in the writing process, this comes very, very handy, I think, because yeah, you get 100%. ideas and happy accidents. So let's try maybe one or two dice rolls, if you don't mind. Sure, sure.
Wow. I, I just wanted to point that out because this randomizer exists in uh, Energy Panel, Brightness Panel, and also in SkyDust. So any of you trying to demo SkyDust, this, that's one feature I would highly recommend uh, you try. Uh, so right. Nagul, I know we are approaching the hour, but is uh, any other thing that you want to share with us, show us in the session? <clears throat> uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I was really kicked about using density and air music on the reverbs. So even on violin, it just works so beautiful. Oh, um, okay. Let's hear that. <laughs> So I just used a uh, chroma verb, you know, standard logic, right. reverb, uh -huh. dark room, 5.8 seconds. And then it was just too, um, again, harsh for this kind of a track, I would okay. say. And I threw in density and air music. And this is what I got. A very chorusy, a uh, sort of a reverb, but it right. just sounded so cool with a dry tone. Without those plugins, this the presence is not so much. Uh, you know, when you solo it, yes, you hear that there is reverb on the violin but when you listen right. to it in the entire mix uh violin almost feels like a dry tone and you try to increase the sense and then you know the reverb becomes too much it's muddy or it's too shrill this that blah blah you you encounter so many problems with that you're giving away some of industry's best kept secrets here Nako. <laughs> because people often you know what i think this should be a gift uh, to everybody who's attending you know between nagel and uh, myself we've mixed a small number of tracks over the years and one thing or one mistake that we've seen people do all the time which we've done ourselves uh, until we learned is that you solo everything try to make everything sound polished or oh, the reverb should be polished it should be here the guitar should be polished the vocal yes. sound should be polished Finally, you undo the solo and everything is polished. Everything is shiny. You don't even, your brain doesn't know where to focus on anymore. So one of the things we all learned the hard way, and like I said, one of the best kept secrets in the industry is try not to solo as much as you cannot. Don't, don't do as much solo. Even when you're yes. EQing, EQ yes. with your solo off. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but try it. Same with reverbs, right? Uh, when you're trying in the whole context of the mix, something dull, usually works better than something that's very sharp and brittle. Yes. And this is why uh, top of the line producers like Nagul himself uses plugins like Air for Music or, or Density to actually dampen stuff and make <clears> them <throat> less polished so that one or two things that are really polished stand out. Yes. It's like, you know, I, I always try to correlate food with music. And it's like, if you're eating a lot of spicy food, um, you might like the first bite, second bite, third bite, but after that, you start craving for something sweet. Right. And you know that's you can't spice up your entire session. You can't spice up all the tracks. That you need to give breathing space for elements to you know breathe in. I think um, that's what is the most important. Like in this case, for example, for me, the violin had to shine the most, and okay. I I I was like, okay, this is violin spot. So what do I need to do? I need to drain out everything, including the violin's reverb as well. I don't want the shine of the violin to get killed. And right. that's why the reverb kind of sounds very well glued to the actual tone. Instead it of becomes fighting part of it. the violin. Yeah, it becomes yes. part of, it becomes yes. one and not two different tracks. Yes. Actually, why don't you play the session from the top to the bottom with everything on? And, sure. you know, as we start to wrap it up. Oh, yes, yes, sure. Let's start with the vocal sample for those who might have oh, yeah. joined late. Uh, just a quick recap. What you could hear first is the rough, dry take of the creative melody uh, that Nagul had in his brain. And then what you can hear after that is with density and the rest of the session was born from that seed uh, with the help of Sun Particle suit of plugins. All right, let's hear it. Yeah, I'll just keep these open. <laughs> cool, thank back. you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh...
that was my sample once again that just sounds amazing we have Thank some you. people yeah this is amazing yeah. so I hey think, i'm uh, glad you brought this up you should explain this to people i think minds yeah. will be blown <laughs> so uh again you know talking about how to use this plugin um in in the context of writing harmonies to a given melody line what i did uh, this is what i um recorded so let me just get rid of this plugin for now and so let this was So that was my melody line and what i did was when i realized that oh i can automate this plugin <laughs> i was like okay let's do it then <laughs> and i put two voices and i started so when you go to the automation window inside density how many of us slot voices these are called slot voices um you can choose any parameter to automate you know slot 1 has gain pitch and the number of voices um slot 2 slot 3 slot 4 like that so i inserted the vocal generators also whatever i would call it <laughs> that way right so, yeah so i generated two of those and i tried to automate the pitch um as we go and you know these pitch values are <clears throat> uh, relative to what note you're singing so if you're singing a c and this is minus 5 then it means that this is generating a g and when your vocal melody moves to an uh, to let's say f then this becomes a c right so, so with the chord so yeah yeah and so forth and with the chord progression in my mind um i chose the notes that i liked and i tried to automate this you can see these knobs move <sighs> So that was one slot, and in the second slot, what I did was, I kept the pitch constant at fourth interval, and then I just brought that in at one note. Nice. Yeah. I'm just exaggerating. So. 
so nice. <laughs> that's what i i love doing this because it saves my voice and i'm i mean it's it's much more it goes way um, deeper than you know as vocalists we're just singing multiple tracks or trying to uh, cheat by do using some of these amazing plugins it's not that i think what's really happening here is density is giving me a new color altogether in my track i don't think i would sound like this if i had recorded Even if you tried these, it right yeah it wouldn't sound like this so it has a very unique character a unique sound to it so that very sonic character where all the voices are glued so well and the harmony sounds so rich is what i really loved about it so i think it's not about just you know uh, not taking strain of recording like 50 60 tracks or calling your friends to do the harmonies or right all that i think it's it's vocal synthesis and i think it's this plugin is doing a really really good job here that's good to hear nakul listen thank you so much it's been amazing before we wrap i just want to invite uh, joao franco from our team uh, to ask any questions that we might have received from our audience or general feedback hello guys hey, so i have a couple of questions um, so one of them was about how heavy uh, our plugins are I already uh, answered but I wanted uh, Nakul cool feedback to know how heavy if he felt it was because uh, what I said to our customers is most of our plugins are pretty light on the CPU except for density which is a little bit heavier still I don't think you needed to do any freeze on the tracks I'm not sure did you require to do anything special no. to use density or other plugins no I I I think all um I was trying to do was test uh against my buffer size and this session is running on 256 because yeah. zoom that's why but yeah yeah no but still I mean even with that right uh on 256 and I have a lot of density uh plugins here yeah and exactly on, exactly and the lot almost of like density and even your your tracks have a lot of uh, multi pitch uh, sections which are yes. the heavier part of density so uh, as you can see there's there's a lot of uh, density instances that, is... there and um, yeah most probably you will be able to use it in any machine um the other question yeah. was uh, sorry joao regarding... uh, oh, sorry, before sorry. we move on i just want to add that for customers you know uh, who might have asked that question uh, including nagul there's many of the leading both hollywood bollywood and worldwide we have some of the elders producers using all of our plugins in multiple instances and one thing we are told or congratulated about is how light they are on the cpu so again don't take our word for it or test drive them yourselves our demos yeah. are some of the industry leading demos meaning uh, the time on each plugin is actually 30 days so hey go ahead and take them for a spin and like i mentioned earlier even some of them are free like Uh, air for music so just want right. to point that out uh, okay joao any other questions so another question was about uh, binaural rendering uh, people were asking if our plugins were able to binaural rendering or if it's a dot thing and i just want to clarify that it's not a dot thing you can use it on a stereo track and just uh, render our, our your track using our plugins in binaural output Uh, it will just render as a binaural but if you have any questions uh, or or doubts about binaural actually our ceo wrote a great book uh, ebook called all you need to know about 3d audio where you can see all of it explained uh, so just look for it and and check it out uh, i also have one thing to ask uh, nakul can you send us that strings blue preset Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Sure. <laughs> sure. We, we can put it in our next version of the density maybe. <laughs> Let's do it. 100%. Let's do that. Yeah, I'll, I want to this... Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I was telling I'll share the session with you. <laughs> yeah, please. And, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you very. Regarding binaural, one thing I wanted to point out is remember the title of the session was uh, imagining or writing for spatial with, you know, in studio with spatial in mind. Just to wrap it up. 
sky dust is a good example uh, because it supports binaural among other things but most importantly if you actually have your own sofa file which means if you have measured got your ears and had measured in for your own custom hrtf you can even import that into sky dust which means you can put on headphones and start writing in full 3D with just headphones, mm -hmm. with your own custom binaural, you will hear things really literally behind you. And being spatial while writing in stereo, just like Nagul did, look at the session, it's stereo. Nagul can now actually literally save the session, hand it over to his mix tech, who might push it out to 5.1 or 7.1 or 7.1.2. As a creative artist, Nagul didn't have to worry about, oh, am I writing in 5.1? Am I writing in 7.1.2? No, he just writes music. And that's what we try to do here uh, at Sound Particles, you know, create tools for artists like Nagul and everyone who's attending. You know, you all are artists and we want you not to worry about technology. We and our programmers and our PhDs will worry about it. Mm -hmm. You worry about creating a music. Uh, Nagul, any final thoughts or words or comments? Uh, yeah, I mean, just one last thing I wanted to, uh, uh, I can stop sharing my video, right? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. So, um, one last thing that was really, really very, um, exciting about working with these plugins was you, you know, I never thought about panning so deeply in my life till now. Right. Okay. That's good. E either good we work news. on. Either we work on Logic Pro X or we work on Pro Tools or we work on Cubase and they have the default ways of panning sounds and um you know auto panner or tremolo plugin or this or that but just with energy panner and brightness panner and even density for that matter the whole rotating sphere that you know you can set it just opens up so much of space in your headphones to play around and like that this these plugins have actually redefined panning for me <laughs> Thank you. That's good to hear. I'm going to take this opportunity to speak a bit more. Apologies to everyone. But one conversation I had with one of the leading engineers uh, here in Los Angeles, we were talking about this plugin. The concept he said is, man, you are going to put us out of, or, or the phrase he used was, again, secrets, right? Some of the industry's best kept secrets. Another thing is mo micro movements, as some engineers would call it. Right. It's not about moving things left and right all the time in studio or in spatial. It's not about flying things around all the time. It has to go with our brains. In fact, it was one of the first webinars I did for Sound Particles. We spoke about psychology of sound. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but fact remains, if a sound remains static, our brain starts to slowly get bored and ignore it. But if you make it move even a little bit, our brain engages even more. So to Nagul's point, I know you never thought about uh, too much panning until now, and I'm not saying do too much panning, but being aware of motion makes your yeah. music breathe much more to Nagul's point. And that's a brilliant point. And I think Nagul and me, we both will get our wrist slapped for sharing too many secrets in one webinar. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, movement is something we excel Oh, at sound particles again you just saw all these plugins and that's one thing we do really well uh, with that i think uh we have come to the end of the webinar nagul uh on behalf of everyone at sound particles and everyone who has joined thank you so 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 much this has been one of the most exciting webinars we've had uh, to date so thank you for taking the time okay. thank you for the music Thank you so much. Let me just add something else, Tony. Um, if anyone feels like I didn't ask the, uh, didn't answer any question, please send us a support ticket because that will be answered soon enough. Okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Nico. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you so much. Let final me thoughts? just finish my final thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the winner of our giveaway is Bill Dennis. I will get in touch with you. After this webinar, thank you very much. Thank you, Nakul. I mean, wow, you are just amazing. Thank you so much for this webinar. Uh, we have a discount code for you. You can use the discount code, we love Nakul, because it's true, we love Nakul. <laughs> uh, and we, you have 30% discount on every product of, of sound particles, except subscriptions, okay? Uh, feel free to use it. You can use it until uh, 4th of June. Okay, so feel free to buy density, sky dust, and start making magic like Nicole did. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.